And I'm like, some doctor. He's like, yeah, he said his... Now, Marky is like a jokester. And he was like, um, yeah, some doctor. I don't know, Dr. Dre. So I was like, Marky, this ain't funny. You know what I mean? It took a minute for it to for actually yeah. be the real deal. Nowadays, everybody want to talk like they got something to say. But nothing comes out when they move their lips. Just a bunch of gibberish. And that's that you forgot about Dre. Nowadays, everybody want to talk like they got something to say. But nothing comes out when they move their lips. Just a bunch of gibberish. And that's that you forgot about Dre. So when did you first speak to Dre? Was it in person or was it on the phone? It was in person. Oh, my Lord. How, what was the... What, how... How, what's going on through in, your, in your mind when that happens? Given your journey at this point, the struggle. Well, I mean, it was... It, the whole day, like seems pretty superficial to me you know when I think about it but that whole day was just like one thing after the next was like I can't believe this is happening yeah. us getting in the car to go to Interscope us being in Interscope us seeing plaques on the wall of like famous artists you know what I mean like this could actually be real mm. and when Dre walked in you know were you cool? Were you trying to play it cool? Were you trying to, you know? Oh yeah, I played it cool. I played it cool, but I mean, I would have just started jocking. I'm about to be humping his leg within about five minutes. <laughs> uh, that's a little weird, but um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking that in my head. I'm thinking I really want to hump his ankle, not his leg, you know. And uh, nah, I'm just like, I I played it cool, you mm. know. And it was like because I didn't want to act like I was like overzealous or too much of a fan to be yeah. like, you know, to not be. I just wanted to present myself like, I guess, as I was, like, laid back, you know, and just... And struggling, hungry, wanting yeah, to do... Yeah, yeah, basically yeah. Basically, like, but, you know, I mean, obviously I was all ears for everything he said, you know, but the fact, basically, we knew that that was going to happen that day. We yeah. kind of figured it out from that day, and Dre was just like, where do we go from here? Let's get the paperwork done, and it was just like, walking out of there was like, oh, shit. Like, How your life can I mean, change. Afterwards, like that. I was like jumping up and down, like hysterical, like, can Dr. Dre, you know what I mean? <laughs> All that work leads up to that point, and then overnight, you're on this journey, you know? Yeah, I mean, once from that point, it happened pretty quick. My name is the first time I heard my name is I remember feeling for me like it was as a defining moment for rap music as say Metallica was for metal or the prodigy was for dance music uh -huh. or there is that punchline again. You save this for the next record. I mean, for for you, what was that feeling like when you finished my name is I know that you, 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 you know, you leant away from playing it after a while, but that song is important to you, right? Yeah, this song is definitely important to me. Um I just you know, I, I think that when I was recording that stuff you know, it, um, initially, I wasn't thinking really like this is going to be a hit record. I wasn't yeah. thinking anything like that. I was thinking I want a reaction from Dre. I want to be able to sit in the booth, look at him through the glass and see what his reaction is going to be when I say these punchlines. Yeah. Because best believe every time I said a punchline, I was waiting for his response. And he was like, damn near fall. He would damn near fall back in his chair. <laughs> And I'd get, you know, or he'd clap or he'd do something that was like on these lines that I'm writing and I'm thinking they're funny. You know what I mean? Because I'm laughing at myself as I'm writing them. I'm thinking, like, is he going to like it the same? So my initial, that whole album was to get a response out of Dre. Proof used to tell me a lot, like, you know, what are you going to do if you go gold? And I'd be like, gold, I'll go through the ceiling if, if you know, whatever. And, uh, and he was like, you know, if you go platinum, what are you going to do? <laughs> and you're like, what? And I was like, you know, I would laugh and I'd just be like, I mean... You know, he would just be like, well, you know, you, you thought meeting Dre wasn't impossible, you know? Well, this is real. And you t 
toured as well. I mean, you know, a lot of rappers, you know, we have that success and lay back and, and not tour and get it right. But you went out and you toured hard. I mean, you know, I saw you a few times on that tour, on the Slim Shady tour. Um, what do you remember much about that tour and how it was? You know, that, that really is just a young guy out on the road, just like, what's going on, isn't it, really? I actually remember nothing. <laughs> it, it was insane. I mean, I was drinking a lot. I was doing, you know, I was doing my little, mm. you know, recreation things that I thought was recreation. It would catch up to me later. But, you know, at the time, it was like, oh, this is cool. Let me do this. You know, everybody, you know, we got this, we got that. You yeah. know, and it was like everything was was there. Yeah, we would be doing two two shows a day. Yeah. Sometimes we do two shows and then a like walk through appearance where we do one song. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So, I mean, it was it was hectic. You came back off that tour, an alcoholic. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but you had tried drugs for the you know, like you said, you you developed the character, started writing about drugs, and then all of a sudden, you know, you start taking the drugs, you know. Yeah, I think I thought like I'm rapping about it. I guess it's okay it. to do it, you know. You get back home, you got some money, and this is a part of the book which I thought was really interesting. You bought your first house. So you finally got some some financial independence and a, and a roof and a nice big roof, effectively compared to where you, where you come from for you and your family for Haley yeah. and for Kim, and but. It's it's in a, ni- a nicest part of town, but it's across the road from a trailer park. Two trailer park girls go round the outside, round the outside, round the outside. So it's like you can't Ironically. escape, right? So it's like your past hasn't caught up with your new reality. Like you're living in this lovely home, and then, but you're still reminded, or or maybe subconsciously reminding yourself about where you came from. You haven't quite left that, have you? You know. I don't know if it was that deep. I think it was just a house we wanted to get. And, <laughs> you know, it just happened to be there. No, what I'm trying to say is psychologically <laughs> speaking. Psychologically, what were you thinking at the time? <laughs> when you wake up every morning and pull back the curtains. I mean, there were mornings I did do that. I'm not going to lie. Mm, mm, mm. You know what it was? It was like this house was so dope because it was the best house we had ever seen. Yeah. You know, me and Kim had ever saw a, a, in our lives. And we walked in there and it was like, oh my God, we got to get this. You know? And it was the, the afterthought was like... There, yeah. There's a trailer park right yeah. across the street. You know, we thought about it later, but we didn't care. We just wanted the house. We yeah. didn't know it was going to bring us problems later. Well, the problems were only beginning because, you know, you start mucking around with guns as well, and that got you in trouble, serious trouble. Yeah, I'd have to say that wasn't very smart. You know, yeah. Um, I, I, the original question I was going to ask you about this was, like, how serious were you, you know, how serious was this? Was there a real serious threat you were going to go to jail? It's like, yeah, you're in court, yeah. But, I mean, like, how like how scared were you? And was this a, a huge turning point for you when you're standing in court? Can you ask me like that, though? How scared were you? <laughs> how scared? Was this, like, a real turning point for you when you're standing in court? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was a turning point in the sense that um, it made me, I had to change my life. I had to make a decision. I think I made a decision when I was sitting in the back of the cop car. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. but when I got through it, it was like, it was, it was, I can't be mm-hmm. acting like an idiot no more. I got kids. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I, I, you know, at the time it was like, I got a daughter, I got a niece. I can't be doing dumb like this. Yeah. You're back in the studio. You're making the, the Marshall Mathers record and, um, and I caught up with you in Docklands and this record like whatever 1.7 and change in the first week in a, a million in America and um, and you're, in, you're now officially you know a rap superstar but at the same time you're surrounded by this crazy controversy that had surrounded N.W.A. Snoop Dogg various rappers who have gone before you you're that guy now you're the guy who's got dodgy lyrical content you know unapologetic about it and all this sort of stuff everyone's railing around you going crazy with the benefit of hindsight how difficult and awkward was that for you being that guy you know um i don't know i i think like i think it's a little bit of like like you said like just focusing on what i needed to focus on i mean at the time it was like i couldn't believe that everybody was making uh, this big of a stink over me because it it it's you. You know what I mean? Like, you're in your body. You don't... You're the same guy getting up in the morning, pulling your pants on one leg at a time. But yeah, yeah, and I'm like, if people could see how little my dick is, they would... <laughs> the entire thing would just be out the window. But regardless, I would get up every morning, put on my pants, and then I'd, you know, walk out the door, and it would just be like, my dick is really small. <laughs> and I am whatever you say I am. If I wasn't, then why would I say I am? In the paper, the news, every day I am. I don't know, it's just the way I am.